Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters Tad Stefanek and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, and Matt DiMarzio with sports. Thank you for joining us. A Burlington teen is facing additional charges in New Hampshire after allegedly causing an accident while racing that killed a Somerville police officer. Michael Ricci, 18, of Burlington, is now facing six new charges, including negligent homicide. He was arrested on Sunday, October 8, and initially charged with felony reckless conduct after allegedly causing an accident on Interstate 95 in Northampton, New Hampshire. New Hampshire State Police say witnesses reported that Ricci was racing other drivers while operating a Mercedes-Benz. Police say he drove over the center lane and struck off-duty Somerville officer Louis Remigio, who was riding a motorcycle. Officer Remigio died from his injuries on Monday night following the accident in the hospital. After his arrest, Ricci posted the $10,000 bail and returned to his Burlington home. However, on Tuesday, October 10th, the Burlington Police Department arrested him again on a warrant related to a previous charge out of Lowell Juvenile Court. Ricci was scheduled to be in court on charges related to the accident on October 20, but reportedly waived his arraignment and posted another $10,000 bail. His next court date has yet to be scheduled. A grand jury has indicted three men for allegedly uh, running a long-time scam in Burlington and other communities. Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan's office released a number of indictments that were handed down between August 3rd and September 20. Included in the indictments for crimes committed in Burlington were Robert O'Neill, 70, of Woburn, and Michael McMillan, 49, of Reading, who were charged with five counts of larceny over $250, conspiracy to commit larceny, and being a common and notorious thief. Keith Ryan, 44, of Woburn, was charged with three counts larceny over $250, conspiracy to commit larceny, and he being a common and notorious thief as well. As reported on B News, in total, the defendants allegedly grossed more than $400,000 between 2008 and 2016 through a scam involving overstock televisions. As part of this scam, the defendants allegedly cold called small business owners and pretended to be their normal UPS delivery person and said that their brother, who worked at Sears or Best Buy, had an overstock of deluxe televisions. They then offered to sell the televisions to the small business at a discount. When the owner showed up on the, at the store, a runner pretending to be an employee would meet them in the parking lot. The victim would hand over the cash payment to the runner, be given a false receipt for the purchase, and told to move their cars to the loading dock while the pretending employee went inside to bring out the televisions. The runner would then enter the store with the cash, leave through another exit, and disappear. And no televisions, obviously, were delivered. A woman has been indicted for allegedly stealing from a Burlington man under her care. Middlesex DA attorney Marion Ryan's office said a grand jury has indicted Marie William, 56, of Pembroke, on charges of larceny over $250 from a person over the age of 60, five counts, theft of a controlled substance, fraudulent use of a credit card, identity fraud, caretaker neglect, larceny under $200, uh, $250 from a person over the age of 60, and being a common and notorious thief. According to the DA's office, in January of 2013, Marie Williams became a personal care attendant to the victim and took care of him in his home. As a caretaker, caretaker her responsibilities included bringing the victim to doctor appointments, dispensing the victim's medication, and taking care of him physically. Authorities allege that during her employment, Williams stole gifts that the victim's sis sister was sending him, stole his medication, and opened credit cards in his name for her personal use. The assistant DA uh, for this case is Heidi Gosul. All defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty, as you know. A new restaurant with breakfast all day? No, that's not my story. The Burlington Town Common was full of people in brightly colored uh, traditional Indian clothing on Sunday as they celebrated the Festival of Lights, also known as Diwali. B News Director Rich Hosford was there and has this report. The Burlington Town Common was filled with people on Sunday, many in brightly colored and elaborate clothing who had come for a big celebration in the classic Indian style. It was a celebration of the Indian holiday Diwali, the Festival of Lights. The event was put on by the American Indians for Burlington organization who wanted to both celebrate the holiday and to share their culture and traditions with all of Burlington. 
I was there and my first mission was to learn a bit more about the history and meaning of Diwali. So Deepavali or Diwali means string of lights. So it is celebrated on the darkest day of the year. So that's the shortest day and longest night. So the idea is let's light the lamp so you can dispel the darkness, of course, but also dispel evil. So the idea is every morning, in fact, on the day of Diwali, when we meet each other, we say, did you take a bath in the Holy Ganges? The idea is not that you actually went to the Holy Ganges and took a bath, but did you take the evil out of your body, out of your mind, and rejuvenate the goodness in you for the rest of your life? This year was the first time the celebration was held in the town common, a change the American Indians for Burlington group was excited to make. So every year, you know, I have lived here for many, many years, and I used to go by the town common when they had the lighting during the, uh, for the Christmas lights. And I think it just brought home to me and my children the tradition of Christmas. I felt that it was part of me, and we brought it to our home. Similarly, we thought we have this beautiful tradition that we want to share with others for whom it may not be part of their tradition. So for us also, the lighting of the tree does two things for us. One is that it is going to represent that the Festival of Lights is part of our tradition as well at this point. And we want to let people know that there is such a festival. Come and learn about our culture. Come and join us. And if you want to be part of it, eat our food, learn more about us, it would be, it'll be our honor and joy to do this. So that's why we thought if we bring it in the commons rather than in my home, I can bring it to people for whom it may not be their tradition. Many town and local officials were at the event, and all of them that we spoke to were very impressed with the celebration and the number of people who came to attend it. Super impressed, Rich, by how many people are here and about um, the turnout that they've had. I was trying to estimate how many people are here. It's um, This is an important thing for uh, all of us that we learn about cultures of cultures that we may not have been exposed to growing up. Well, so far today it's been uh, overwhelming. Uh, I've never seen this before. It's the first time I've been here for this. Uh, the food's been incredible. The people are just unbelievable, fantastic, friendly. Uh, it's a great event. It's a really, really good event. Um, the people from the Indian Americans for Burlington really worked hard to put all of this together. and. Um, I think they're really excited to have their first ever Diwali celebration on the common and I'm really excited that uh, that the Indian American community is feeling a part of the Burlington community and I'm hoping that next year there'll be even more people who maybe didn't know about Diwali like myself um, who can come and enjoy all of the celebration. Representatives from the town also spoke about how they felt it was important for them to be at the celebration and show support for Burlington's Indian population. Well, when you get right down to the bottom line is the fact that we can all live together. That's the bottom line. They're all Indians. I'm born American. There's American Indians here. There's um, um, kids that were born here. The parents are from India. I think it's great that we can all stand here and, and have one big party and everyone's in a good mood and it's just a very friendly, friendly atmosphere. The message coming from the Indian American community really warrants nothing short of uh, equal, if not greater, effort on uh, the part of certainly the town and, and the people who live here. But yeah, absolutely the leaders in the community. It's, it's important to recognize the magnitude of this effort and to, um, to come and support this event in any way that we can. Finally, the event organizers said they were extremely excited that so many people came and took part of the Festival of Lights. Yeah, I'm really, really overwhelmed actually. When we started it, we said even if 100 people come, it'll be just fine. So two things happened when we started it. The Indian Americans were so excited to be able to share their tradition with the town at large. And you can tell from the, you know, the turnout here that it's really amazing. And I'm also impressed at the number of non uh, Indian Americans, people of different ethnic origins who are here and learning. I'm so honored, for example, that Senator Friedman came, um, our superintendent of police and, you know, of uh, the school system. All of these people came and are learning a little bit of our traditions. I think if we learn about each other's traditions, the world will be beautiful and inclusive. And that's the message of Diwali as well. Friendship, and that's why we tie that little thread. We invite you to our home. We want to make you your, our brothers and our sisters, and we would love to live with peace. Om Shanti, as we said. On the Town Common, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford saying Diwali Mubarak Ho.
wonderful first time event. It looks like it's going to grow in stature as the years go by. A new restaurant with breakfast all day options will be opening in the Burlington Mall. According to Simon Properties, the mall will welcome the Friendly Toast on Monday, October 23rd. This will be the Friendly Toast's fourth location and will serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The restaurant will have 120 seats and the decor will feature eclectic and funky elements with bright green walls adorned with vintage flair. Release says the menu offers a wide variety of options, including omelets, tacos, mac and cheese, and pancakes. There are also healthy options to round up the menu, like the Power Bowl with quinoa, kale, chicken, sausage, and salsa verde. The Friendly Toast will have a full bar with seasonal cocktails and drinks and a large selection of draft beers and extensive wine lists. Burlington Parks and Recreation Department held a special event called Trucktober, where the community could come out and try some offerings from local food trucks from around the area. B News reporter Robert Paris was there with B News volunteer Maddie Shipker, and they have this report. Hi, I'm Maddie Shipker, and I'm here at Trucktober. Trucktober is a festival put on by Burlington Parks and Recreation to commemorate their 50th anniversary. There's a cornhole tournament, live music, and there's a lot of stuff to check out today. The community of Burlington had their taste buds ready for a delicious festivity on the town common. On Saturday, October 14th, the Burlington Parks and Recreation Department had an event called Trucktober, which gave the community an opportunity to sample a variety of food trucks from around the area. BCAP Production Coordinator Chris Flaherty and B News volunteer Matty Shipka were at the event and got a chance to speak with some of the food truck participants. So can you tell us a little bit about your business? Um, so I, I, I'm from Jamaica. I cook um, some Jamaican food. Um, I've been here for um, eight, eight years and um, I'm very excited to like share some of my um, family recipe in Burlington. So I've been doing making Jamaica for from 2012. Um, it's been going good so far. I serve a lot of, lot of offices, building, um, lunch and stuff like that. I do like food truck festival, um, catering. My favorite is the jerk chicken wings. Yeah, those are really spicy. Uh, really got a lot of flavor to it. So Augustus is kind of a classic staple icon of Barica. Uh, based right on 3A, right down the street, so nice easy for us to get to. Uh, we're very, very busy today. A lot of people know us. We're here kind of regulars. And uh, yeah, we're very excited to be here, very busy, and uh, it's a really good day. Weather turned out very well. It did, and we've seen you guys at Celebrate Burlington before and all their events around town. What do you guys serve, other than chicken, obviously? <laughs> uh, so today we have a kind of a private event menu, so we're just doing chicken and fries mostly. But um, if you come to our store or any other locations, we have a lot of more other varieties. We have garden salads, uh, more chicken salads available, uh, mozzarella sticks, who doesn't love those? Uh, yeah, so just a lot of, lot of good stuff. I've heard about this specialty sub you guys have over at the store. You know what I'm talking about? It's oh, like the, the, the explosion. Yes. Tell me about that. Oh, man, it's, it's a monster. Uh, it's with a large sub roll. We put four mozzarella sticks in it, French fries, chicken, and sauce. That thing weighs like two pounds, and it costs almost over $11. It's a lot of food. So you finish that, you're good for the week. Yeah, you're good for a few days. <laughs> Director of the Burlington Parks and Rec came by and gave us the scoop on Trucktober and other fun events that will wrap up the Rec's 50th anniversary. Well, we're looking at different ideas. Um, our, our goal of our 50th anniversary events was one special event a month in addition to our regularly special, planned special events. So um, when we got to October, we were thinking, what could we do? We have truck day. We'd like to do a food truck event at some point. The summer was pretty busy, so we figured trucks, October, trucktober, it just seemed to kind of fit. And I think people were thinking, oh, it's another, another truck day, but uh, it's really food trucks. Um, so that's how it came about, a nice fall event on the common. So um, we have um, a road race coming up on November 17th, and then we have a gala on December 14th. Um, so more details will come out on the gala soon, as well as the road race. Um, but we're really looking forward to those two events. But our special events, we also have um, you know, our uh, Halloween Spooktacular coming up um, in a couple weeks. So keep an eye out for that. And then we have our um, Tom Turkey Hunt as well as the tree lighting, and then we have breakfast with Santa, of course, as well. So we're really heading into the uh, holiday season full blast. Besides all the food trucks, there was also a live band on the gazebo playing songs from past and present artists. Well, some of us performed for years, I would say four years together, and some were very new. He just played today for the first time or sang with us for the first time. So, yeah. 
first live performance. How are you feeling? Pretty good so far. And, uh, <laughs> looks like the crowd's loving it too, so yeah, yeah I'm excited. Yeah. So what types of music do you guys play? Uh, top 40, like whatever people like. Some jazz at the beginning. Uh, that's pretty much it, yeah. A big thank you to all the food trucks here today and the Burlington Parks and Recreation for putting on another great event. Until next time, I'm Maddie Shipka for B News Weekly. Maddie. Burlington Elementary students are learning about the value of giving to others and pets in need are getting the benefit. Wendy Delmonico, owner of A Better Way Petting Sitting, has for the second year in a row partnered with Burlington's elementary schools to participate in the Pet Sitters International's Hungry Bowl Pet Food Drive that takes place through the month of October. She has placed bins in the schools and invited students to bring in any kind of dog or cat food that will then be brought to the Northeast Animal Shelter in Salem and MSPCA Nevins Farm in Methuen. Delmonico, a member of Pet Sitters International, said she decided to participate in the food drive last year, and after being denied at numerous public buildings for the collection, she got in touch with the school department and was given the go-ahead from Superintendent Eric Conti. She said the kids were very excited to be able to help the pets. In its first year, the program was a big success. Delmonico said, in a total, in total, students donated 473 pounds of pet food, and this year she was hoping to surpass that amount. Francis Wyman principal Nicole McDonald said the program fits directly into the school's philosophy. She said the school works hard to promote being part of a generous community, and the pet food drive works towards that goal. The bins were in Francis Wyman of Fox Hill from October 2nd to October 13th. They are now in Memorial School and Pine Glen and will be there until October 27th. Uh, the mission of the Burlington Fire Department is to protect and preserve life and property in the town of Burlington. Aside from responding to incidents of fire and medical emergencies, the fire department provides programs and education to residents, not the least of which is their annual open house. News reporter Tad Stefanak attended this year's event and files this report. Recently, Burlington's Bravest opened their big doors to the community for their annual open house. It's quite a bit of setup. The guys are very productive and, and, and creative in, in making this a, a good event. And we have all the trucks lined up. They have a number of trucks on display that the kids can climb on and, uh, and ask questions about all the tools and, and whatnot. We, we have a demonstration out back with, with hose, uh, hose stream, uh, spraying water. I, I try to get uh, ahead of time all these uh, brochures and trinkets and things that are fire related, uh, fire safety related. And we get to hand these out to anybody that would, would like to take them home and read over them. Hopefully they read over them. Even the crayons have a message on them, you know, and the pencils. The kids really like this. It gets their attention, and uh, hopefully the parents will, will read it to them if they can't read at this point. It just We just want to get the message out of fire safety early in their lives. And Burlington seems to be working. Yeah, uh, we're happy with, with what this town has done in the last 20, 30 years. With all the free goodies, popcorn, and pizza, courtesy of Papa Gino's, the fire department open house was a huge hit with kids. We're looking at the fire the trucks. trucks. We're well, looking at the trucks and we're going on an awesome field trip going on the bounce house next. Yeah, and also we're eating pizza. The grand finale of the day was a metal bending demonstration of the Burlington Fire Department's Jaws of Life. We cut up a car to simulate a car accident. If we had to extricate someone, if they were trapped inside the vehicle, we'd have to cut, cut off the doors, cut the roof off to access to better access um, medically and to remove the patient easier without squeezing them through a smaller hole or whatever. You know, it's nice and sunny out today. We've got a lot of room, you know, plenty of air around it. So, but in real life, it's going to be midnight. It's going to be dark. It's going to be rainy, snowy in the middle of the woods with a tree around it with all kinds of stuff. So. It's really not usually easy to do. It's usually, we have other parameters around us, so, but we get it done. This is awesome. From the Burlington Fire Department, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak, back to you in the studio. Bye. We go now to B News weatherman Peter Brown in our weather center for the latest forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Manny Shipka to see what's happening in Burlington.
Well, hello everyone, and this is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the next seven days. And I hope you've all been out there taking advantage of this beautiful October weather we've been having. We really have been spoiled this fall, that's for sure. It's really had the fall of, really had the feeling of summer all the way out into October, so it's been beautiful. Now, starting out our period coming up, no surprise again, starting out on Friday, we're going to see temperatures nearly 10 degrees above average again. Temperatures in the mid-60s, however, it's kind of funny to think. These high temperatures in the mid-60s are about 10 degrees lower than what we've been seeing. So it's going to feel actually a little bit cooler out there. So that's something you don't hear too much often in October, that's for sure. Again, we're not going to be too far actually from these record highs that we usually see in this time of October in the mid-70s. And we'll be pushing towards that again when we get into the weekend. And of course, as we get towards the end of our period, look at this, we're getting almost into the tail end of October. And our average high should be maybe only in the upper 50s, but it looks like we're going to be a little ways above that. So, of course, as you notice when you're getting out of work or going to work in the morning, how short the days are now. We actually have um, pretty short days now, just a little over 11 hours of daylight. So that's definitely the only thing that's reminding us that the fall is continuing on. Now, as we go ahead, I'm going to show you what's going to be going on with our weather for the next seven days. And you're probably going to be asking me, look at this weather map. This doesn't look like... A typical fall pattern really for us. There's really not much going on in the Burlington area and in fact anywhere in New England from Maine all the way down to the New York City area. The only time where we're going to see maybe a chance of a few spotty showers here and there might be along to about Tuesday or Wednesday of next week when we're going to be seeing a strong cold front coming through the area and approaching the Burlington area. However, other than that, really starting out on Friday we're going to have high pressure and control of us off of the southeastern coast of New England that's going to be bringing in some mild weather again coming up into our area. In fact, by the time we get into the Monday and Tuesday time frame, we may have a really, really strong southerly wind bringing some really warm temperatures up here. Again, back up into the low, maybe mid-70s. And of course, as soon as this front passes us by the end of next week, the temperatures are going to cool down a little bit, but nothing crazy, nothing, you know, bone chilling, nothing too cold, that's for sure. And just fair weather skies after that, so beautiful weather coming up. Now... The next slides are a little bit harkening back to a little bit of reality, and unfortunately, this is looking ahead towards our winter. Now, now this is actually what the snowfall looked like, and you're probably saying, why is he looking at snowfall in Siberia? This is actually sometimes a very good indication of what the winter is going to be like in the New England area as we get into the months. Now, this was in October of last year, and as you can see, there was a fairly decent amount of snow cover all over Russia here, but nothing really too crazy, that's for sure. The polar ice cap was very small, that's for sure. We didn't even have ice all the way across the Arctic Ocean yet, so that was definitely indicative of a much warmer winter than average last year. A little bit of snow here and there, but really wasn't too bad. Now, as we go ahead, I'm going to show you a graphic of what the snowfall looks like in Siberia at this time of the year in October. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of difference. There's a little bit more in northern Alaska than we had this time last year, a little more in the easternmost points of Russia, but really looking at this, there really isn't that much snow cover again in Siberia. And we're going to have to see if that translates to another mild winter or not. Now, looking at some of, the, of course, the Farmer's Almanac and other resources like that, they are predicting a much cooler winter than average, and especially from what we've been seeing the past couple of years. But if this is any indication of what might be coming to us, we may not have too big of a problem with winter. We're not going to set that in stone right now, but there is a potential we could have another mild winter, that's for sure, if those trends continue. Now, as we go ahead, I'm going to show you some of the beautiful weather we have again coming up for the next seven days. Again, look at this, starting out on our Friday. Temperature is well above average in the mid-60s again. Kind of chilly at night, but that's to be expected as we get into this part of October. But again, look at this, Saturday and Sunday. If you're heading to the Patriots game on Sunday, you are going to have absolutely beautiful conditions, especially for this late in October. It's going to be sunny skies, dry as can be, and temperatures in the mid-70s, with the temperatures actually not falling too low at night, so very comfortable when the game is getting out. Again, getting into Monday and Tuesday, our temperatures still continue in the 70s. Again, Tuesday, we introduce this chance of maybe a little bit of rain in the Burlington area as a cold front approaches our area. And that's going to drop our temperatures back down to average to a little bit above average. But, of course, the night's going to be getting very chilly. But all in all, this is absolutely a beautiful October pattern. It looks like it's continuing at least for the next week or so. So everyone, get out there, enjoy this great October weather we've been having, and have a great week.
I'm Maddie Shipka, and this is your community calendar. Are you getting worried that you might have a tick? On Wednesday, October 25th at 7.15 p.m., the Burlington Garden Club will be having a presentation on problems with Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases at the Council on Aging inside the Murray Kelly Wing. The presentation will discuss the problems with tick identification, infectious disease that they cause, and much more. Everyone is welcome. The event is free. For more info, visit gcfm.org slash Burlington Garden Club. Bring your Halloween costumes and get ready to trick or treat. On Saturday, October 28th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., 3rd Ave in Burlington will be having Monster Mash. This fun-filled day includes trick-or-treating at all restaurants and shops. There will also be face painting, balloon animals, and live music on the green. Everyone is welcome. The event is free. For more information, visit 3rdaveburlington.com or call 781-270-4000. It's back. The most spookiest event of the season is here. On Saturday, October 28th, from 4.30 to 7 p.m., the Burlington Parks and Recreation Department will be having their annual event, Halloween Spooktacular at Simons Park. There will also be activities, games, tricks, and treats. Everyone is welcome. The event is also free. Don't forget to wear your Halloween costumes. For more information, visit burlingtonrecreation.org or call 781-270-1695. I'm Maddie Shipka, and this has been your Community Calendar. The fall sports season is more than halfway over, and many Red Devils teams are battling for a spot at the finals. We go now to B News sports reporter Matt DiMaggio for the latest sports report. Hey everyone, this is Matt DiMaggio here with your weekly sports report. The fall season is winding down at the high school, and there will be at least one championship to celebrate. Last week, the Red Devil golf team won the Middlesex League Freedom Division title with wins against Storm and Melrose. Some people weren't all that happy when the league split into two divisions a few years back when Arlington and Wilmington increased the, the league for 10 to 12 schools. But yet, well, whether you're a, a fan of the format or not, it has certainly given Burlington teams plenty of hardware. The championship for the golfers is the seventh straight freedom title. In other words, the Devils have won the league every year since the split. The boys' cross-country team won a league title of its own but fell to Wakefield last week. In the end, the runners will settle for second place after a win against Storm earlier this week. The girls also beat Storm for their first victory of the fall campaign. The boys' soccer and volleyball teams are having exciting finishes. The girls actually punched their ticket to the playoffs on Tuesday with a 3-1 win over Storm that improved the Devils to 10-6 on the season with four matches to go. Burlington's last home match of the season will be against North Reading on October 30th. The boys' soccer team, meanwhile, was 7-8 as the season wind winds down. The Devils play Stornham in a big game on Thursday night and finish the regular season against Watertown and Melrose next week. And that's all for sports. I'm Matt DiMaggio. I'm back to you guys in the studio. Another week, another photo to highlight. Today's photo shows a beautiful morning a morning glory flower that if you oversleep, you'll miss it in its full splendor. This photo is one of mine. It was taken in my garden. There are over a thousand species of morning glories and quite a big variety of them. Most uh, unveil their flowers in the early morning and uh, close up shop after a few hours by midday. Morning glory was first known in China for its medicinal uses uh, due, to, due to the properties of its seeds. They were introduced to Japan in the 9th century and for the first time were used as ornamental flowers. The Japanese developed many different varieties of the flower with names such as Brocade of Dawn, Moon in the Dusk, and Wisteria Girl. We'd like to see your photos. They could be of something you see around town, the weather outside your own door, or photos of your family members and pets. Whatever you think is interesting and would like to share with the rest of the community. Email your photos to bcattv at bcattv.org with the subject line, Photo of the Week. Okay, that's it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with Rich Hosford, Tad Stefanak, Robert Paris, Peter Brown, Matt DiMarzio, and Maddie Shipka with the Community Calendar. Thank you for joining us.